Hi, welcome to Fiber Chats. My name is Irina, and my guest today is Cecile Hrvik from Norway. Uh, and Cecile is designer and author of My Best Knitted Treasures and Beautiful Knits for All Seasons. Hi, Cecile, welcome to my channel. Hello, Irina, nice to meet you. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to start with like going back. I wanna talk about the culture of knitting in Norway and how you grew up and like when you started knitting. Uh, I started very, very, very early. Um, I grew up in uh, a house with my family and with my grandparents uh, as well. And uh, my mother and my grandmother, they were knitting and sewing. They were knitting very much, actually. And uh, uh, I was always uh, nagging them to teach me because I, I thought it was uh, fa fantastic when uh, they just had this uh, balls of yarn and uh, it was magic when all these uh, beautiful things uh, came uh, onto the needles. Uh, but they thought I was uh, very young, so they postponed it all the time. And, uh, and when, then my sister, she got very sick uh, with pneumonia and went to the hospital and we had uh, uh, a tenant on the, um, uh, on the, in the basement. Uh, she was living there and she was uh, watching me very much in that period and she's uh, taught me to start knitting that's so interesting so your mom yeah. and your grandmother didn't want but the nanny no they thought that well I was four so I was only four years old so they didn't think I would make it and um, but then I had uh, then I had something to start with and then then they uh, followed up so do you remember uh, like the very beginning of it? Do you remember like some of your first uh, knitting experiences? Like what were you knitting? Yeah, uh, well, it was mostly things for my dolls, uh, my Barbie doll when I got a little older and um, a doll that was very popular at the time called the Shoyuben. And uh, I was knitting uh, skirts and shirts and I don't remember very, uh, very well, but I was knitting mostly things for uh, the dolls, but I was dreaming of making things for myself. And uh, then one thing, it was pretty early. I, I'm not sure how old I was, but uh, I had seen these Fair Isle um, uh, knittings and, um, and I was uh, wanting to make a hat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember I was, um, and they put me to bed. I'm not sure how old I was, maybe six or seven or something. And I found uh, some yarn in light blue and uh, white. And uh, I was laying under uh, my um, my uh, blanket, yeah, uh, with some light on and knitting a fair isle uh, pattern. <laughs> so and my mother came in to see, uh, to look, she had some visitors. And uh, I remember she was, oh, my God, what is she? Uh, has, look at this, look at that. And everybody was so exciting because I had started to, to if you know the pattern Marius, Norwegian pattern of Marius, it was kind of beginning of that, but I didn't have any pattern to look after. I was just doing it out of my head. It was nice. certainly not uh, perfect, but uh, at a very good start. And she was so impressed. You think you had it in your like in your mind and in your hands just by watching them do it, like you sort of. Yes, I, uh, for uh, I've been looking at pictures and things, and I was yeah. So I was, I didn't have anything to follow. I just had it in my head because I'd seen it, and uh, so I copied that. That's amazing. But without any pattern or anything. So when so you... I remember that very well, and then I started to. Um, I also uh, learned pretty, uh, I don't remember exactly when, but I, I um, learned how to crochet. And for a period I was doing a lot of crochet too, which I also very much enjoyed. And I think uh, I was mostly doing that for my dolls, more than anything oh, for a sure. period. And so, then I remember more when I started school. Right. So mm. like when your mom or your grandma needed, right? Were they following any patterns? Were there some like traditional motifs? Like what were they knitting? Uh, they were knitting a little, uh, mostly sweaters and jackets and uh, they were following uh, patterns always. So, um, uh, but when I wanted to make something, well, the dream was to make something for myself. 
make uh, sweaters and jackets and dresses or whatever. That was uh, my aim. Uh, but when I went to the um, yarn shop, uh, shop, I hardly ever found things I liked because of a more fa old fashioned, not for a very, very young girl. Right. So sometimes I had to buy a pattern just to have something to start with. And then things started to, I started to experiment for myself. So do you Very remember many. that like first time feeling like when did it register in your mind that you are a designer? Um, hmm. uh, I'm not sure, but I went to school in Italy doing uh, uh, Accademia di Costume di Moda in Rome to do uh, uh, fashion designing there. But um, I was mostly, I was aimed against um, it, uh, towards uh, knitting and when I came home after that I started to to design for different yarn companies so it I guess it was at the age of um, 27 or something right so that I started to design no I think you started to design when you were six <laughs> yeah 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 more or less but I mean uh, more professional mm. But like you have a mind of the designer from like super early on. Yes, I, yes, I did. So that's where I said something too. So maybe that was uh, the start of me. I started to design right away when I was very, very little. But uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, when I look at your garments, right, there is so much going on. There is like embroidery, there is fair isle, there are beads, there is like little ribbons I mean it's just like mm. it's a work of art like each one of them is a work of art do you remember like early on when you were making that cl like clothes for your dolls was it just simple garments for the doll or was it also like had it all those details no that came later yeah it came later I was uh, um, in influenced by other designers I was seeing things fashion I, and I Understand, understood in my mind that uh, it was possible to mix all these things. So uh, I saw some somebody doing some uh, mix of things and then I got other ideas coming out of that again. So, uh, well, more things you know, more ideas you get. So um, it was growing. How did it develop? Like, because when I look at your, when I scroll Instagram, right? I don't mm. even need to look at your name. Like I see your pictures. I know it's your pictures. Like there is certain style to your knitting, even if like, even though they all look very different, but there is something mm -hmm. that screams your name there. Yeah, I know. So many, many people say that, but sometimes uh, uh, they make mistakes too, because it's not always uh, <laughs> my things, but uh, very often, yeah. And I like that, uh, that people can uh, recognize my things. Right. But like, hmm. do you think you have a signature style? Yes, I, I think so. But um, uh, it has developed and sometimes, uh, but sometimes I like to do other things too. But uh, especially after I started my, uh, my web shop and with the yarn I'm using. So this side of my designing has developed more. Right. Uh, if you understand. Um, many years ago, I've been doing cables. Well, I still do cables sometimes, but uh, I've been doing different things. But because I'm now mostly using this Norwegian yarn, that uh, they're very good for my uh, kind of uh, designs, I think. So, mm. so. But earlier, I've been doing, like I said, cables and uh, lace uh, knitting, and uh, uh, but uh, this kind of yarn are more is more. Yeah, uh, like fitting to suitable the suits right. um, more these designs, and then I get when I work with a certain design, I get more ideas in also in the same field or in the same direction. Right. So, so I may if I change some yarn, I maybe I will pop up with something completely different. I don't know, <laughs> right. but sometimes I make something quite different. No, I know. I saw this poncho and I'm like dying to knit it, actually. I love it. It had like all the cables and was like very like this. Yeah, you mean the gray one? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Well, it doesn't have cables, but it has more lace. It has some, right. uh, like some leaves. Yeah. So all the, 
all the incre uh, increases or decreases, uh, they come in. It's uh, knitted top down and all, they're all coming inside all the leaves. Right, so, no, it's beautiful. Like I, I would... have to do those things too. Mm. Yeah. Because it's like it looks so perfect for this kind of weather right now, you know. Just yes, like, it is. I it's used it easy. a lot myself. Yeah. So I had to pick it up because I haven't used it this year yet. Uh, yet. So, so why did you decide to open your shop? It has uh, always been a dream for me to to be able to do that and not only work for other companies, other yarn companies. Uh, I have done that a lot too, but then I could never decide really what to do because I had to follow their guidelines and uh, uh, they had well one thing that was really annoying all the time they said oh um, we want you to do something very very special but it has to be easy so everybody has everybody has to be able to make it and uh, that gave me a lot of limitations of course so when I started my own company um, I can do whatever I want Right. And I see that the, these more things with more details, uh, they sell more than the very easy things too. So that's kind of fun. So when you decided to write your first book, what was that process like? Like what pushed you to write a book? Um, I had uh, been uh, thinking about it for a long time, but uh, was not a little undecisive. Uh, and then I got, um, well, people were coming to me, um, making, uh, their we're going to make all the books and they were asking if they could use, uh, or, well, uh, if they could use some of my designs. And I th then I thought, no, nah, I want to do that. I want to keep them for myself. So maybe it's time for me to make my own book after all. Was it difficult um, to pick your favorites because it's called My Best Knitted Treasures? Yeah, the last one. Yeah. Mm. Because like, I use, you just presented two books, but I have three books. Yeah, yeah. Two, right. Okay. So yeah. what was the first one? What's the. Uh, Lekre masker or Lekne Sting, the blue one. Uh, I have this black and white bolero on the, the cover. I had made it first in um, for a magazine. Well, I made it for myself and then a, a, a magazine. Uh, uh, paid me to have um, have it in uh, in their in one of their numbers, and I made it in two colors: one in red and uh, white, and with very many flower, uh, many colors in the flowers, and then uh, one gray and white with the same flowers. And then, so I wanted that was very very popular, and um, I got so many e emails, messages, people who wanted to to make that one. And I sold the pattern also for a while after it had been uh, a while after it had been in magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then so that was kind of a start for uh, this book. And I had a, uh, I um, approached uh, Yildo, which is a very big uh, editors editorial house in uh, in uh, Norway. Uh, and. They hadn't made very many uh, knitting books before, so but they were very positive, and we started right away. And then uh, I made some new models, but I could I also took some of my old models that I have been making, some for myself and some for uh, these um, uh, for some yarn companies. So it was a mixture of uh, these, and uh, well. We uh, took all the pictures. I had a very, very photo a good photographer, um, Anna-Lena Jelsta. She, she pictures both of my, my first two books. And she took, uh, it was a dream for me to, uh, to, uh, to have her making, taking all the pictures for uh, my first book. And she uh, accepted that. And uh, uh, we had a very good uh, real, um, cooperation taking, uh, shooting the photos. And, uh, well, uh, it came, it took me one year to, to publish it. So in a year, we, we published a book. So when those pictures were taken, was that your vision of how you wanted it to be? Or was it her vision of how she wanted those pictures to look? It was uh, very much my vision, but it was also her vision. So she had ideas how to make it. And, uh, but um, 
sometimes I listened to her and she, well, it was a very good uh, cooperation. Mm -hmm. And I had, uh, I had a, a vision of what kind of knitting book it was supposed to be. And um, I had also decided if, I, if they wouldn't let me do it my way, I didn't want to make it a um, knitting book. Right. Because I wanted beautiful photos, I wanted, uh, uh, yeah, I wanted to look very, um, kind of a fairy tale, right. so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that this is like very much your style because you wanted like very feminine, very like nice. Yes. It doesn't look like a traditional Norwegian. No, in fact, design. because I the, often the traditional, I really like folkloristic uh, designs and everything, but very often they're very Box. big and um, big and uh, thick and not uh, not feminine at all um i had some issues uh, well i had some problems uh, making uh, getting into that but i figured that out little by little and uh, um like uh, for example not be, uh, being strict about uh, uh, what you call the, the reports mm -hmm. um, uh, that uh, I could increase and decrease in each side. So I made uh, um, certain ways of doing that. I was not, uh, uh, because in this old fashioned or more traditional um, knitting, the, they were strict about that all the reports had to be full right. all the way around, but then they're very straight, you know. So I don't care about that. I make, uh, now I make one pearl knit, a per stitch in each side uh, and I increase and decrease on each side so it's almost like you are using um, uh, material to sew you know right so I am I am uh, make it very visible so so when you published that first book right how was it received was it like immediately very, it's a book that sold uh, most right so it was very well uh, received. So for me, it was a very, I uh, was very high up for a, <laughs> for a while. So it was very much, it was, I had, I got very much attention and my uh, Facebook, um, my more professional Facebook uh, uh, site, it was growing and uh, yeah. So I had a um, very, it, it was received very well. Right. So then how, like, what did, you, what did you learn from publishing that first book that you changed in the second and the third? Like, was there something different or you just followed the same? Footsteps? Well, uh, for the second book, which maybe is the one that I like the best, but because then I made all, well, almost all models, uh, not all new models for this book. And it was more my style. Because the, the first one was, uh, well, I liked the models, but many of them were not that uh, traditional, um, not that uh, traditional patterns uh, right. so much. So I learned that um, for the book, for book two, I wanted uh, more to make all new models and more, uh, have more um, charts there for uh, the patterns and much more, embroidery and more, much more of these details that I like in book number two actually right. mm. when did you get when did you decide to like incorporate embroidery and like and all the embellishments into your designs was it like straight from the beginning or at some point you were like you know what let's make it fancier let's make it more no I no I started little by little I saw some other people doing it was especially one Norwegian designer, Irene Haugland. She was doing it a lot. And then uh, um, I got the idea from her and a couple of other designers that I don't remember the name of, that I'm not heard about very much right now. Um, but I got the idea seeing them doing something similar. And uh, so I started to, that's how I got the idea. And uh, I experiment, experiment, uh, experimented for myself, and um, yeah, uh, and then with the crochet came a little later. So I'd just been experimenting. Mm -hmm. You, you, I didn't. When I 
uh, started to knit and uh, when and a little after that too there were no, there was no youtube and uh, nothing online to to yeah i just had to try it myself right. and i was very much in, inspired in magazines where they had knitting patterns and uh, well i was looking at the very i was buying many magazines uh, I liked uh, uh, with or, uh, oriental carpets with uh, wallpapers and uh, yeah, looking at all these things and they gave me ideas. Right. It's interesting mm. that like that's what inspires you. It's like uh, mm. it seems like unrelated, but like in reality, it's all those intricate designs that. Yes, I think it's very. I think it's fun to kind of. Uh, to, uh, get an idea and implement it in something quite uh, different right so uh, like when when you design now right are you very like do you plan ahead do you think about okay like now it's gonna be fall season so I'm gonna publish this and then the winter it's gonna be coats and then the spring it's gonna be t like are you planning uh, no, I, the last few years everything has been so chaotic and so I, uh, well, the la last few years I have had very little time to to um, design. Um, so uh, unfortunately, I've been packing and packing, <laughs> so I'm packing so much orders, which is very good for me, of course. Uh, but um, and I have published not very many models except that I had a new book out so but I haven't been publishing very much for my for my uh, web shop and uh, some of the things I have been publishing uh, lately uh, they were ready a couple of years ago and uh, so that's a little embarrassing but I haven't had time to to <laughs> publish it before uh, as the last uh, square oversized uh, sweater if you've seen that one orange yeah, the, yeah it was photographed two years ago but it it's perfect for right now so yeah. so i try to fit it in like that but uh, i have some uh, i have some uh, i have one other model that's uh, finished the photographing many a uh, long time ago so i hope to get it into the web shop uh, quite soon but uh, and then I had some um, make. I'm mean, working on a few other designs too. But um, uh, I'm not really very much. Uh, I'm not planning very much. I get an idea and I start it, uh, make the pattern, maybe partly, and send it out to a knitter. And um, sometimes I just start on the pattern, send it to a knitter, and complete the the, the pattern little by little. But then when I get it back, I'm making all the all the oh, embellishment. I have um, may, many times I have an idea how I want it, but when I get it back, it kind of lives its own its own life, and uh, some very often it uh, ends up completely different. You would mm -hmm. have an idea in mind, yes. and, and you yeah. would like start doing it, and then yes. you change, the ideas change as it evolves in your hands yeah well um, more yeah yeah uh, when I get the finished uh, model back or finished knitted model back very often I I change uh, things like for example I have this long jacket long uh, rose jacket mm -hmm. um, I sent it away and the knitter knitted it as I had told her to do but then I didn't like the colors so I was uh, changing all the colors on the, the, the cuffs. Is that what you call the cuffs? Yes. Is, but with um, uh, duplicate stitches to change the color. <laughs> so yeah. So it, I it changed it into more red instead of pink that I didn't like. Right. So it, it looked completely different when I finished with it. <laughs> How long does it take you, like when you get the garment and then you start embellishing? Are they talking like days, weeks, hours? Like how long? It depends very take? much because sometimes, well, it's uh, some some of the garments uh, have to do a lot, have to uh, fill them up with a lot of embe embellishment. But uh, uh, sometimes I just need a couple of days, and uh, sometimes I need, need much longer time. But it depends also if I'm 
happy with the work I'm doing, yeah, how it's uh, working out, uh, then it goes pretty quick. And if I have time and uh, enough though, but um, if I'm not very happy with it, I undo it, undo it and undo it and I try again and uh, have a bit laying there, trying out with color. So it can take quite a long time too. I'm working on a long jacket right now that I'm not that happy with. So it it's lasted for a long time. <laughs> Is there also any because... like design that you look back, right? And you so very proud that you like this is these hands made this. Like, is there something that like you're superbly proud of? Uh, yes, but many. <laughs> uh, yes, but I can't really. Is that I like picking a favorite child? Like, is it impossible to say like I love this one the most? Um. Uh, I have, well, I'm very, very fond of uh, Rosa for Ball, uh, Ro Rosa at the Ball, I'm very, um, because the colors are a little different from uh, the, the main color, for example, it's not my favorite kind of color, but together with the others, I think they come out so nicely. And then I have another one, which was in my second book that I'm using a lot. I have it on the, the, my couch there. <laughs> uh, I can show you. This one. I love that. Yeah. So um, I haven't done very much embellishment on this one, except I put a lot of buttons on it uh, with a mother of pearl uh, buttons. Uh, I, want, but, I um, wanted to ask you about that. Like I noticed a lot of your garments have mother of pearl buttons. Mm. Do you collect them? Do you like, do you remember when you first used them? Is is there like a stash of uh, buttons in your house? <laughs> Um, I think I first started to use uh, maybe when I was making making my first book. I put a lot of the, the black and white uh, mother of pearls um, buttons on the, the sleeves of uh, the the bolero on the front of that book. Right. So maybe that, or a little earlier than that too, but uh, I think maybe more or less that period. So when, then af when after you... that, I put, uh, I used them on all, I think all of my uh, jackets. Right, I, right. I love seeing them. It's like, it's like little jeweled up. Yes, because, mm -hmm. and even if the color isn't perfect to, they're not uh, completely uh, the same, but they the kind of blend in so good with the colors because it reflects the other colors. So I, I really like them. But they are more delicate. They're not that strong as, um, as uh, plastic or some metal uh, buttons. You have to more be more careful with them. Right. So like when you go to, I don't know, markets, stores, like are you searching for those? Are you like hunting for them? No, because I, I, I buy them from um, the wholesale. Yeah. yeah, so I, I buy uh, uh, hundreds of them <laughs> because so I, I, yeah. I noticed because I, I, they, I put them in, uh, they're always available for the jackets in my kids. Right. Hmm. Okay, so let's talk about your kids. So you sell, it's like comes, unless it's from the book, right? It comes with the pattern, the yarn, and all the stuff that you put yes. that thing, right? On the yeah, uh, well, for um most of the models there are not in any books so there uh, then I come with one-on-one -on -one pattern and it contains of course the pattern and the, uh, the materials and you can and the sequences and uh, beads buttons and uh, sometimes you can uh, choose if you want to, to put them with the, the, the yarn or not and uh, uh, then when I made the, the last book, um, I found out that I want to make uh, kits for the models there too. But then, of course, the patterns uh, don't come as a single printed patterns. Then you need the book to, right. to make the models. 
Yeah. So how do you decide on the amount of yarn? Like, because everybody's tension is different. And I noticed like, that's my biggest fear when I'm buying a kit, mm. I'm going to run out of yarn. Like, how do you calculate that? Well, I, um, I don't knit all the models and uh, I know that that's, uh, that can be a problem. So I usually have quite a lot of yarn for each size to avoid that problem. Yeah. So some people think uh, are very happy for uh, for uh, having extra yarn, but uh, some maybe don't appreciate appreciate it that much. Uh, but very many are happy because then they can need something extra, some uh, some uh, wrist warmers hat or something. Because I cannot uh, risk to have to sell a uh, send extra free yarn to yes. the United States or something, it uh, yeah. would be very bad for me. Um, so I, it's very seldom that you have to little. I noticed you have beautiful accessories. Like there is this pair of gloves that I'm just like drooling over. It has like these beautiful flowers and there is this uh, edging and it just like, there is so many details mm -hmm. that went into that. Like, do you, I feel like you treat every, little thing as a piece of art like it's never just mittens it's never just gloves like there's like so many things going on at the same time yeah it's like it's, your canvas like you are it's like you're drawing sort of uh, yeah yeah um, yeah because i don't really um, make very many of these small things but when i do it i think uh, i think it's fun to to embellish with the fun details and uh, so you're kind of playing with it so is it hard for you to stop like when you like working yeah, on sometimes it's uh, yeah yeah <laughs> but uh, i don't want to overdo it either maybe sometimes people some people think i do but uh, if when people make these uh, things that way i say that if you want it to do it different that you are going to wear it it's your choice it's uh, it's your garment you stop when you want and uh, you don't have to do as much as on the, the original model but uh, i see that very many people do go all the way so uh, that's fun what do you feel when you see like other people making your designs i think that's very fun uh, i feel flattered and especially with so when somebody has done beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, job on it. Right. Are you ever surprised because, by like the color choices or the embellishment different from you? Yes, yeah, sometimes. But the most of uh, most of the kits, uh, well, from the books, it's different because then people do whatever they like. But my kits uh, are usually special in um, certain colors, even though I very often. Um, help people to choose other other colors so then i'm i asked them to write me a, an email and then i sent pictures of uh, alternative colors and uh, so i help very many people uh, to to choose other colors too right because when, i usually just make in one color choice because i don't have the time i don't have a possibility to make a lot of uh, a lot of altern alternative uh, colors but um, uh, I would really love to because I see that each model can go in a, a big range of, uh, of uh, all the colors. So I think it's fun that people want to 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 knit in other right. colors too. So. so I noticed like you've been to a lot of festivals where you present your work and you like uh, show your book and stuff. Do you miss that with the COVID? Like, was that how did COVID affect your life? in the past couple of years? Well, uh, COVID, is, <laughs> it's, um, I feel bad saying it, but COVID has been a good time for me. Really? <laughs> yeah, because uh, people have been uh, knitting more than uh, ever. And um, uh, I'm not very much into going around too much. So I like to, I like to work by myself. And, uh, but when I'm around, um, I enjoy it very much too, but uh, there is always a lot of preparation and things uh, 
and I, I would get nervous before I'm going to places like that to uh, I'm afraid uh, to forget something and very often I have had speeches like you know with PowerPoint and I have had some uh, catwalks uh, had to prepare the music and uh, uh, and then I have the workshops and uh, so I get very nervous that something is will go wrong but uh, most of the time everything works out well and uh, when I'm there I've been there for a little while I relax more and I feel uh, it's so fun to meet people and uh, but I get very tired when I've been doing that because there is a lot of things going up, uh, going around in my head, right. especially uh, ahead of uh, these um, festivals. Yeah. Because I, most, of, most of the places I've been, I have to travel for a while too, so. so Extra tiring. Yes, even though I like to, I like to travel, but uh, uh, there are a lot of things to, to collect, to bring and, um, yeah so a lot of planning and I'm not a very good planner <laughs> do you love teaching do you like giving workshops uh, I never do it here and people ask me to do it but I'm not very into it uh, but when I do it when, on these festivals uh, I think it's fun and uh, it's always a very good atmosphere and the um, uh, I was asked many years before I started to teach because I'm not the teacher type, but um, I said no all the time because um, I thought, no, I cannot uh, teach people. Others are much, uh, I can do what I do, but uh, uh, there are better teachers to, to, make, uh, to help uh, people uh, need than, uh, than I am. But then I found out I can, I can teach uh, the things I do, the, but then I thought that um, these things are so simple because most of these techniques are very simple. And I thought, no, everybody can do this, but they cannot. So I found that was the best uh, thing for me to do. So I'm not planning to make other workshops. Um, I have mostly three types of uh, workshops. And when I am go to some festivals, I teach this these things the the one for embroidery on uh, knitting and one for um, crochet on knitting and then my special um, button bags that I invented a few years ago I'm very pleased with them so I teach these uh, three things to 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 teach other people certain techniques of knitting and how to start knitting and things that's not my thing so Others uh, do that much better than me, but uh, I can teach the way I make my uh, designs and what's the details and embellishments. Right. And I think people are interested in, in that. Mm. People think these techniques are very, very difficult because maybe they look so, but uh, most of the techniques are very easy, quite, they're quite basic, but um, there are many, so I said that these things are not so hard to make but you most of all you need patience right well you also mentioned in your interview with fruity knitting that i watched that you only most of the times you only use two colors right yes mm. right. yes because i think it's very well when you use more colors it's uh it's not uh, it's not nice to knit with that and it gets too thick and uh, yeah, so if I need more colors, I usually use uh, um, duplicate stitches. Right. So then you don't get the long uh, uh, floats on uh, the wrong side. And uh, I think that's much better. And then you can play so much more with the colors. Right. So like when you design, right? Like you have the whole process, you can, you, um come up with the idea, you come up with the shape of the stuff that you're gonna make, you knit it, you write pattern, you take pictures. What's your favorite part of that design process? Um, maybe uh, the embellishment. Mm. But it's always fun. I don't, I'm not really too fond of uh, making uh, patterns. 
but uh, and I also like to to draw the, the charts in the, oh, what's the name um, uh, Illustrator. I use Adobe Adobe uh, Illustrator. I like to do to make the patterns uh, or the charts. I mean, um, but most of all, I love doing the embellishment. That's Is, the most are there fun like part. new materials that you haven't used that you are thinking of using that you like toying with the idea of using for the embellishments? And not real. I have some ideas, uh, but that's most those adding some extra yarn. Uh, I'm very, I'm very happy with the the, the sequences I uh, use um, because they're not they're not fl too flashy. I think uh, um, kind of blend quite uh, good into the 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 models or the colors. Um, I'm also also happy with the the, the buttons, uh, but I have some ideas with maybe some thin uh, mohair or some very thin um, yarn, but I'm um, or either to knit together with one thread thread and or make some details, but I'm not uh, I haven't figured that that out. Yet. Is there like a day in your life when you're not making something? when you're not knitting or not embellishing or like your hands is, are not busy? Uh, yes, but if um, there have been some days uh, lately, that's because I'm not 100% content with the long jacket I'm making. So then, uh, but then it's right beside me on the couch. <laughs> so I have the possibility to grab it when, uh, when I feel like it. But I'm um, getting along so it's uh, go, it's getting ahead but it's taking much longer time than it usually does so what's your plans for like upcoming year do you already, are you already to make ready? more to make more um, more designs that's my first uh, plan because the, the two uh, last years <coughs> sorry mm, i haven't had that much time to make uh, things for my web shop, except the book. That's what I'm saying to people because I'm having my um, my studio and my yeah my uh, office and studio uh, in a building where there are a lot of uh, painters and artists right now. And I said to one of them um, last fall that, uh, oh, I haven't been, I haven't been, haven't had time to be very, very, um, uh, productive or uh, not productive but artistic or uh, whatever creative yeah. And I, 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 because I've been working so much with the, the book and the patterns and taking photos and everything and and I said oh that maybe that's not true because I'm making I have been making a book though <laughs> so, so I have been doing a lot but um, I want to do make more things for uh, for the the web shop do you prefer to work on like individual patterns or do you like that process of writing a book and putting them together? Uh, I like to make uh, individual patterns mm. and I don't really have any ideas of uh, making many things uh, and a product line or whatever, if I can say that. I, I just get an idea and I just do it. So it can be very well, look a little like uh, be the same uh, same design or something similar to what I'm usually doing, but it can also be something completely different. Right. But uh, so that's um, I just grab the idea even, but but I have many ideas all the time, but uh, I don't have the time to. There you always write, something, some, there always something in my head. <laughs> Do you keep like a diary of your ideas? Do you write them down? I used to that, uh, do that many, well, once in a while I've done it, but uh, lately I haven't done it. So uh, I've been too busy. <laughs> so, well, well, but I think I'm going to look into, because uh, when I was designing for different yarn companies, I always had to make sketches. Then I was, ma I was making sketches, I was making swatches, um, so I have many of these things. Uh, I want to take a look uh, through them to see if, uh, oh, well, that's a good one. So because I have kept, I have um, collect, uh, I kept them all, right. or most of them at all. 
And I feel like your designs are absolutely timeless. So you can go back 20 years and it's going to be still totally in fashion and vogue. I think so too. And I can add something. I can take something. I can just get an ID from them. Yes, that's what I'm pretty much, uh, I'm quite content with that that kind of timeless or yeah, they're not very, not that much fashion. So mm. Well, I mean, I think that's like the definition of work when something can be worn for, you know. A long time, yes, I hope so. Mm. That's, uh, and some some more of others, of course, but um, yeah, I think that kind of, uh, kind of uh, timeless. Mm. Do you, what happens to the, all the things that you needed? Do you keep them all? Do you wear them all? Do you sell them? Do you give them to people? Mm, I, I have sold some, but very few, but I have, uh, I have some plans of uh, selling out some of them, but uh, very many of them I have here in my drawers um, because uh, sometimes I have, I've had some, a few catwalks, for example, it's not very often, but uh, then I need these models. Right. And uh, I have um, I have had some uh, some um, uh, uh, exhibitions too. Then I need the models, of course. So my I can I think I'm going to sell out some of them, but not my most treasured ones. <laughs> I think they're going to keep them forever. <laughs> I love actually how you present them with with those like fluffy pink and purple skirts and it's just like it's so feminine it's like so yes it gets more feminine I'm not the one who invented that uh, idea I'm not the only one doing it either but uh, I think it I think it's very photogenic together with knitwear right so it's also like very striking combination because you have this warm woolly coat sort of Mm -hmm. fluffy flowing skirts It's like really yeah. Lovely. Yeah, I like that too. I, I don't want to do it all the time, but um, and maybe I've done it too much. I don't know. I love that. <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm going to continue doing it uh, once in a while. I hope one day I'll get to see it in real life because I would love to just like study that thing it's a, like yeah. every time I see your pictures I have to enlarge it and like go into every detail and just see all those yeah, yeah, yeah. pictures and all those little buttons and those and that it's yes just I get many I, I get many uh, emails and messages that people wonder about uh, how to do this and how to do that so hmm. and very many um, sometimes I have to intervene because uh, I see people uh, uh, Talk, talking or writing about it in some uh, Facebook or whatever. And I've seen very often that people say, oh, I cannot do that because uh, I cannot bring the thread all around uh, so many f- colors uh, in one round. And then I have to say that now you just, I just need, you, I just uh, use two threads <laughs> and the, the rest uh, is uh, using, uh, well, it's uh, uh, embroidery. Right. No, I mean, I like to say, like, whenever people say something is too difficult, I like to say it's all one stitch at the time, you know? It's like yes, that's right. Yeah. That's, all uh, all yeah. it takes is patience, you know? You can mm, take yeah. everything. Yeah, I always say that to people, not that about one stitch at the time, but uh, that's very true. But I say it's not that difficult, uh, but you just do it step by step, step. And, but most of all, you need the patience. Right. Mm. Well, I love talking to you today. Thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. And I hope we'll get to meet at one of the festivals once the COVID's gonna leave us. Hopefully yeah. soon. And thank, thank you so much for having me. Thank you.